In this video, we will consider how to size a chain of inverters driving an external capacitance. This is a very specific case of sizing a chain of logic gates, but this specific case is very useful. So this is the problem statement. We have n inverters numbered from 0 to n minus 1. They are driving an external capacitance Cl. We are given both n and Cl. We are also given the size of the very first inverter in the chain, which is CG0. So um, if we are given CG0, which is the input capacitance of the first inverter, this is equivalent to knowing its size. What we are required to do is to find the size of each of the inverters for j equals 0 all the way up to n minus 1 so that we minimize the total delay through the chain Tp. So why is this problem interesting? This seems to be a very specific case. First of all, it's interesting because we will see this kind of, of structure being used a lot when we need to drive a very large capacitance. This is the case, for example, in uh, clock networks or in driving power rails. So this is a specific case that we will use a lot, but also because it forms the foundation upon which we will uh, base the approach we use to uh, size more complicated logic gates. So the first thing we will do is we will try to find the delay expression for a specific stage J. So J is uh, just a generic inverter right in the middle of the chain. We don't know which one it is, but we want to find an expression for TPJ. So TPJ will be 0.69 RJ, the resistance of inverter J, multiplied by C intrinsic or C internal of stage J plus C external that stage J sees. Now we want to note something about uh, C internal for stage J, that C internal for any stage is its own drain capacitance. And that C external for any stage is going to be the gate capacitance that we see from the next stage. So we can actually simplify this into 0.69 RJ into C drain from stage J plus C gate from stage J plus 1. So we can actually divide this into two components, 0.69 RJ CDJ and 0.69 RJ CGJ plus 1. The first component is the intrinsic delay of the inverter, and this is a critically important quantity. T intrinsic for an inverter is sometimes given the symbol TP0, and it is the intrinsic delay of an inverter. Note that the intrinsic delay of the inverter, the delay of the inverter when it is unloaded, is not a function of the size of the inverter, and this is really critical. So if you have an inverter and it's sized at any size, um, k and 2k. We don't really care about what k is. The time constant for this inverter will be uh, 3r0 c0. And it's really not going to matter what k is because intrinsic delay for the inverter or for any gate actually is going to be a constant quantity. So this constant quantity uh, tp0 is actually dependent only on the technology that we use. And therefore it is a very useful quantity. It is a quantity that is usually given by uh, technology providers as a measure of how fast the technology is. So it's a known number. It's a number that you know and you should uh, be aware of for the technology you're using. This is as good a physical constant as mobility or uh, capacitance per unit area or all of these technology de dependent parameters. This is a uh, a uh, explicitly technology dependent parameter. So the first term TP0 can be taken as a common factor. This is basically a physical constant and inside we have 1 plus 0.69 rj cg j plus 1 by 0.69 rj cd j and this can be simplified further into a very useful expression tp equals tp naught into 1 plus cg j plus 1 by cd j so if we look at CGJ plus 1 by CDJ, this is a ratio of capacitances. However, it is a ratio of um, drain capacitance and gain capa again, gate capacitance. This is not very useful, so we will redefine it by using the relationship CD equals gamma CG. 
this is a relation that we talked about in video number one and therefore uh, we will use it now and tp will be equal to tp naught into one plus cg j plus one over gamma cgj we replaced cdj with gamma cgj uh, and this does not mean that the drain capacitance for inverter J is related to its gate capacitance in any physical way. It is just related in a numerical way. But now the ratio CG J plus one by CGJ is a very interesting ratio because it is the ratio of the input capacitances. But as we talked in video one, it is also the ratio of sizes because the ratio of capacitances is the ratio of sizes. Because as we said, knowing the input capacitance of a, of a gate is as good as knowing its size. And so we give this uh, ratio a uh, name and we call it fan out. And the symbol for it is small f. So this is fan out for stage j. And it represents, what, what it says is how much bigger the next stage is relative to the current stage. So, so if the fan out is 10, this means the next stage is 10 times as big as the current stage. It represents how much harder it is for the current stage to drive the next stage. And so we end up with a very useful expression for uh, delay, Tp equals Tp0 plus Fj over gamma. And of course here we are talking about Tpj, the delay of stage j, not Tp, which is the total delay. So this is the first equation we will use, and it's very important. So we need also to recall the definition of fan out. Now, for each stage, there is a fan out, right? So for stage uh, zero, fan out zero is going to be equal to uh, CG1 by CG0, and uh, F1 is going to be CG2 by CG1, and so on. What if we multiply the fan outs for all stages? So uh, this is going to be F0, F1, F2, all the way up to Fn minus 2 times Fn minus 1. So we will start out with CG1 by CG0 times CG2 by CG1, times CG3 by CG2, and then we keep continuing until we reach uh, CGN minus 1 by CGN minus 2, times CL by CGN minus 1. Here we are using the fact that for the last stage, stage N minus 1, the upcoming capacitance is CL and not a gate capacitance from a stage in the, in the chain. What we will notice here is that everything will cancel out except for CL and C0. And so we end up with CL and CG0. So if we multiply all the fan outs of all the stages, we end up with the ratio of the output capacitance of the chain CL and the input capacitance of the first stage CG0, which are both given. So this quantity can actually be calculated a priori. It can be calculated as soon as we start solving. And we will give this quantity a symbol, capital F, and we will call it chain fan out. So what does chain fan out represent? It asks the question, if the chain was represented as a black box, what is the fan out of this entire chain? The entire chain will have an input capacitance of CG0 and an output capacitance of CL. So that the, if we consider the whole chain to be a single stage, its fan out, which is F capital in this case, will be CL by CG0, which is again something we can calculate at the beginning of the, uh, of the, of the uh, problem. Remember that this is independent of sizing in the inverters. So whatever you do with the inverters in the chain, this will remain a fact. So up till this point, we haven't actually done any optimization. We didn't try to find any optimal solution. Again, the objective of optimization was to minimize TP, the total delay in the chain. But the total delay in the chain will be the summation of all stage delays, which is going to give us TP naught sigma 1 plus Fj over gamma, and the summation is over the index J. So what we want to do is find the sizing for the gates that minimizes TP. So the sizes of the inverters that minimizes TP. When we want to minimize something, we usually differentiate it. But size does not, does not make an appearance in this equation. So how do we differentiate? What variable do we differentiate with respect to? And the answer is we differentiate with respect to CGJ, the gate capacitance of stage J. Why? Because if we know the gate capacitance, we know the size. In fact, the two are 
related to each other in a direct proportion. So differentiating with respect to size is equivalent to differentiating with, the, with respect to the input capacitance. And so when we differentiate with respect to CGJ, we have a huge equation with n uh, terms in the summation, which is kind of, um, of, of tiresome. But notice that CGJ makes an appearance only in two terms. It makes an appearance once in the numerator and once in the denominator. So it makes an appearance only twice, right? So we only have to differentiate these two terms, TP0 into 1 plus CGJ plus 1 by gamma CGJ plus TP0 and the other term where CGJ makes an appearance in the numerator as a, as a, as a loading for gate or, or inverter J minus 1. CGJ does not make an appearance in any other terms and therefore differentiating them will be uh, uh, trivial because they are all constants with respect to CGJ. And so when we differentiate here, we end up with minus CGJ plus 1 by gamma CGJ square plus 1 over gamma CGJ minus 1. And of course, when we want to do minimization, when we differentiate, we equate with null, so we equate with 0. And what this tells us is that for optimization to happen, CGJ by CGJ um, minus 1 has to be equal to CGJ plus 1 by CGJ. This is the most useful form of the result of optimization because what this tells us is that this ratio, which is Fj minus 1, has to equal this ratio, which is Fj. So the result is, if we want to optimize the delay through the inverter chain, we have to size it so that the fan out from one stage to the next is equal. This is for all j. There was nothing special about the stage j that we took into consideration. So this applies to all stages. But we also know that for all stages, if we find the product of all of their fanouts, it gives us capital F, which is CL by CG0. Now, this applies in all cases. But if we have optimized the chain, then Fj is equal to a constant value, which is F optimal. So Fj is the same for all stages. And so multiplying Fj for all stages, for n stages, is going to be F optimal to the power of n. And this is going to be equal to Cl by Cg0. And therefore, F optimal is equal to the nth root of Cl by Cg0. And this is the result of optimization, which we wanted to find from the very beginning. So let's talk about how we can do the optimization. We are given CL, we are given CG0, and we are given N, the number of stages. We calculate F optimal as square root of N CL by CG0. This allows us to know what is the optimal uh, fan out that we can use to minimize the delay through the entire chain. So this is F optimal, and this is going to have F optimal. All stages are going to have F optimal. Because we know the size of the first inverter through its CG0, and because we know F optimal for the first stage, we can find the size of the second stage, because what F is, is the ratio of capacitances. And knowing the input capacitance of the next stage allows us to know its size. And from the stage one, we can also find the size of stage two, and so on. Now, it's, it's worth noting that the result of optimization here said that uh, the fan out for each stage has to be equal to the fan out in the other stages. And this makes sense because in this case, we have stages that are totally non-differentiated from each other. They are identical to each other. So we have to, we have to expect that the result of optimization would be that we need um, to, uh, to make all of them uh, have the same property, have the same fan out.